Well, good day all. I wrap in with your spider ETF stock wrap up. And this wrap up is for Thursday and we're at the 2nd of June, 2022. And here we are looking at markets where the first thing I saw tonight is looking at market watch. And the, one of the first things they got death cross, Apple death cross. Now, for those of you who don't know what that is, a death cross is when the 50 day moving average of closes crosses underneath the 200. And it's often a sign that innately the market's getting more bearish. You wouldn't know that today because if you look behind me, practically everything, and I mean it, practically everything with this exception of XLE is in the green. And it's a surprise because the market certainly wasn't starting that way, but it fits in with my idea. And I've just got to tell you that I think we're in a bear market rally. I think that if you look at the stock indices, you know, there, there's thousands of stocks. I can't say every stock is in a bear market rally, and I'm not. The stock indices are run your 18-week moving average of closes on your weekly chart, and you'll see what I'm getting at. The market's making a run, or apparently trying to, for that number, and that's very typical in markets that have broken down. I've said before, you can get 10% even a little bit, bit uh, bigger than that rallies, but they often go the other way. Why? Because the question is, what happens to this market as the Fed gets its way? If you think the Fed isn't going to get its way, okay, that's you. I think the Fed gets its way. You don't stand in front of a, a freight train. The, the Fed has decided interest rates are the way to go to slow the economy down. We've just begun QT, not E, T, which is quantitative tightening, but that takes a long time to have an impact. Rather, what's really going to be doing is you're gonna get in another 10 days or so now, 12 days, you're gonna get your 50 basis point hike. You'll get in one after that in July. Now, along the way, we're gonna see what jobs data does. Mentioning that, tomorrow morning, we get US jobs data. They're looking for about a gain of 330,000. I never go by ADP because the number is like this. It, it, it's not a real number. I do pay attention to the Challenger Gray Christmas number, and that shows me an idea what corporations are doing, and they're, they're gonna let loose of some people. And you see that, you're seeing it on already. If you're reading the news headlines, X uh, internet companies letting people go, people scaling back, blah, blah. I see it. That's to be expected with what the Fed is trying to do. What'll get the Fed's ire is let's assume you get a job number of 350, 370,000. They're not gonna like that. I don't even know that they're gonna like 330,000 jobs. They'll like anything under 300. It means that their plan is working and the market's doing their job for it and it's starting to impact the job creation. They don't wanna break the market. Understand the difference, this is a tightrope. The tightrope the Fed is walking is we want to create and help keep a healthy economy, relatively speaking, which means we've got to stop all this job creation to a degree because if people have too much money, they keep spending and that's a problem. But if we keep the economy somewhat balanced, and this is such the hard thing to do, well then we can avoid a deep recession. It also means that we sort of are they trying to get to stagflation, a flat economy, interest, rather uh, inflation running to the upside? I don't know. It, it's such a difficult event and we're at the beginning of it. So it's very difficult there. When you look at Zoom, staying right on up, bottom tier as we talked about, and I will bring up another stock next week, but I figured I'd end with this. I really should have taken the swing line and put it right here today because now you've got the pattern of higher lows, higher highs, and you end up with that. So until the market takes out 104.92, breaks that pattern, you're in a very nice uptrend. One of the key resistance points, and it's key, will be this 119.52 area, the 100-day moving average of closes. And what's going to happen is you're getting the Bollinger Band lifting into it. It's a serious resistance point. I would expect the market to back off from there. Am I bullish? Yes. Am I telling traders start lightening up? Absolutely. That's what I've been telling my morning subscribers. You don't get all the uh, things I say, buy here, sell there, do this. Um, when you look at the slow stochastics overbought, so not embedded, overbought, making a run into these two numbers, probably a zone to be watching. 
Last night, I decided to take my wife out and we went to see uh, Top Gun. And remember, that was a Wednesday night. I would say the movie theater was 80% full for Top Gun. I mean, that's big time. Concession selling, the whole thing, and the market still not running. I'm concerned. Do I know if Jurassic Park is going to be a, um, a blockbuster? I don't know. I noticed on the titles, you know, as they're showing the trailers, uh, we're going to get another Mission Impossible from Tom Cruise coming out later, much later, okay? Not right now. He's gonna, not going to follow back to back, but it's going to be a two-part one. So I look at that and I go, okay, what can that do? I'm only concerned with the summer because the summer is where this thing has its best shot. After the summer, I think their, re, their cash starts dwindling. That's just the nature of the movie business. And when that starts, can they meet their payments? I don't know if, what they've locked in in interest rates, lines, and so on. Be interesting. In the meantime, so far the work has worked as I thought. You got your rally away from here, and I told you there'd be resistance at the upper Bollinger Band. You have it between the 100-day average, and that's it. But I don't like the sh uh, short side of the market going into the summer blockbusters. I'd rather wait than get overly bearish. As I said, you've got to be looking now at Apple because you have the 50-day moving average. This is the 45. They're all fighting. Starting the fight with the 200, and the markets are trying to come down. I have on the chart here, the, I didn't put the 50 on here. You have the 200, you have the 100, the 18. But you're getting the death cross. So you're going to hear a lot of talk about that if you watch financial TV. It does not mean it has to break, but I will say this. I think this market's got serious issues at 151.21 up to 155, uh, let's call it 160, the 200-day average right in that zone. So uh, 155.33, if I said 151, it's 155.33, the upper Bollinger Band into that 160 area. Am I a bear saying go short? No. Does that look like something I'd say to go short on? No. But it's also not telling me to buy it. The market's overbought. It's had a nice correction. I'll let somebody else own it. Disney, I've been bullish on. I've told you I thought we'd get a rally here coming in. Everybody I know is taking their kids to Disney, Universal Studios. I mean, it's family after family. I know with young kids, they're on the run. I've got the uh, family members that are taking their family this weekend. I know it's going to cost a fortune. I wish them the best. Uh, but up to the upper Bollinger Band overbought, you're in a resistance point near term. XLF, come on. I'd like to see it get up to the Bollinger Band again, but I think the pros got out two days ago at that upper band. As the market lifted up there, it's overbought. You're overbought in XLI. There's a theme here. You've used a lot of power. You're getting overbought coming into the upper Bollinger Bands on market upon market upon market. They're ripe for a correction is what I'm saying. Do I pick tops ever? Never. There is a difference between telling traders you're up here in a resistance zone and me saying go short, look for that market. First off, let me tell you what's wrong with that. I build filters on my trading style. It's all in my complete charting course. And one of the filters, and a major one, is that you're only taking buy signals above the red line and only sell signals below it. You're not trying to pick tops. Top pickers and bottom pickers, I've owned brokerage companies for years, decades. They don't make money. Trend traders make the money. Investors can make money. But the guy that's an in and out trader trying to pick these tops and bottom, it's, I don't care if it's the futures markets, spiders, ETFs, nah, nah, nah. They generally get lucky, but they're not really, and they better have a lot of cash because they got to ride out markets instead of playing trends. In XHB, I'm so surprised that the home builders are still getting a run here. Uh, upper Bollinger Band, trend up until you take out the lows of yesterday of 61.36. You are overbought, there's that theme, but I cannot see it up. All right, the energy sector. OPEC says today they're going to give you more oil. Instead of 400 and some odd thousand barrels a day extra, they're going to 600 and some odd thousand barrels a day extra. To me, that sounds bearish, right? Market reverses and goes up on the news. It was down a couple of dollars early. 
then it turns around in the barrels. It's nuts. That's the best way to say it. If the red line closes under 79, I'm no longer bullish. Barring that, on these breaks in XLE, what do I keep saying in the mornings? Buy, my subscribers are hearing me. You're buying a certain moving average on the downside, looking for the Bollinger Band again, and you're out of this trade when the red line's under 79. I don't mind telling you that. In GLD, you've been just battling back and forth between, actually it's been against the 18-day average of closes. Now it looks like it's gonna be the Bollinger Band to the 100-day down to there. You are not in a trend, you are overbought. Just like so many of the other markets, you're coming up there in an overbought arena, same in GDX, overbought arena, not in a trend. You don't have higher highs, higher low pattern at all. That's what a trend is. You're also overbought according to the slow stochastic reading, my favorite, copper. I told you down here, I think the copper's just going to be, I, I think copper's the trade for years to come. How's that for a statement? Everything I read, be it electricity, whatever you need, you need copper, and there's not enough of it. I know it's what that penny's made out of. It, you know, we used to throw it away. It didn't have value. Grab them. They're going to have value. The copper keeps coming up. You're now trading in the $4.5 range, uh, a pound. I look for copper to go up over five, five and a half uh, in time, and that's because we're going to so much electric use, you're going to need this copper and that copper is important, there's infrastructure to be done, there's so many things worldwide, and there's not new mines coming on. And the ones that are out there, like in Peru and so on, well, the workers are fighting, and they, they're walking off jobs, uh, you, you got big problems going on, disruption. That was okay when China was shut down. Now that China's reopening, and you know, they're, they're backing off their zero tolerance because they claim their, their counts are such where they can uh, let people go back to the office and the factories. There's going to be demand, and that demand will be in silver. It'll be in a lot of the base metals. AGG, okay, you're, you're neutral going into what? You're, you, it's like T, TLT, BND. You want to see the jobs data tomorrow to have an idea. Mm, the Fed's foot on that. Are they going to kick it down and floor it and go for three... 50-point hikes, who knows? You're going to get this jobs data, then you got to get July's, then you got to get August. But people like to make sensationalism. And they'll say, oh, this says what the Fed has to do here or there. You know better than that. The Fed does not go by emotion. They're deliberate. They have to be deliberate. They can get things wrong. We saw that on the transition of inflation. Okay, Janet Yellick got it wrong. Every Fed member's, well, I don't want to say every Fed member. Mr. Powell got it wrong, and certain of the Fed presidents got it wrong. I certainly got it wrong. I thought there was more transitionary phase than this permanency of the inflation that came up. And you'll say you didn't, and you were right. I congratulate you. It's not a question. I know what I said, and I, you know, I said I was wrong. I'm wrong a lot. I'm like Swiss cheese. Uh, got a lot of holes in me. When you look at UUP, the dollar index, so was this just a bear market rally? So far, that's it. Until that red line closes over 21, these rallies are short sales, still looking for the lower Bollinger Band, and the breaks in the FXE are buys, looking for the upper band until this closes under 79 and the dollar finishes back over 21 on the slow stochastic. Now, there's another technique that I love, and it has to do with what do you do as you're, you're looking at this, called pivot points. Now, let me explain what pivot points are for the uninitiated. The market, it's a, not a formula I devised by any stretch of the imagination. There are some very famous traders that did it. I cannot mention the one trader. He's barred by the NFA, and as such, I can't even mention his name. I know it sounds crazy, but not only can I not do business with him, I can't mention his name, and I won't. Suffice to say, I saw this work firsthand, and I went, I've never seen anything like it. His problem was he got bigger than the marketplace, okay? Futures are not uh, the foreign currency market. They're, they're what they are. 
He's a very famous futures chart analyst. And so let, let me give you the gist of it. You look at the previous day's range. There's a formula you apply to it. I create a three-part series for you. I show you the formula, show you how it's done in the formula. The second video part shows you the traditional way of working with that and the lines that it's going to create resistance and support points where you're selling into resistance, buying into support, coming out at the white line, the center line. What was always wrong to me was you're not taking into account as the market overbought, oversold, getting stronger, getting weaker. So what I did is I took my method of teaching stochastics, I applied this, and I created a day trade series. Some people will want that. I find that it's, uh, especially spiders, ETFs, interesting as can be. So if you're a trader that's looking for something like this, maybe it helps you with your entry to get long, get short. Where's the, the peaks in this? Where's the valleys? Well, let me give this to you. It's free. All you need to do is go to our website at www.iraepstein.com under the word free offers. You can also, at any point here, just take your cursor, move to the top of this, You'll see an icon come out, give it a click, it'll take you right into the free offer section. Sign up for this and anything else you want. One final thing, remember to subscribe to this channel. Makes it easy when I put out special updates, whatever I do, you'll get them like that. Just hit your subscribe button. I'm I Rapstein, you have yourselves a great day. I will talk to you all tomorrow. Take care.